Now you're looking uh, live in the Ross Viet Modules vestibule. Yuri Malenchenko on the left, Tim Copra in the center, Tim Peak of the European Space Agency on the right, as they gather uh, to say farewell uh, to Jeff Williams, Oleg Skorpochka, and uh, Alexei Ovchinin. Uh, final farewells and handshakes uh, all the way around uh, before they make their way uh, through that hatchway behind Peak into the Soyuz TMA 19M spacecraft. Copra first, uh, followed by Peak, as uh, we are about to lose our signal uh, through the tracking and data relay satellite system. Uh, some bonus uh, KU coverage uh, now, as uh, Malenchenko offers a final uh, wave and a farewell. Uh, the uh, crew, once inside of the Soyuz, uh, will begin uh, the process of closing the hatch. Once the hatch is closed, uh, they will uh, transfer the Soyuz vehicle from uh, ISS provided power to autonomous power uh, through the remainder of the Soyuz's time through undocking and its uh, return to Earth. And you see at the hatchway, Alex Skorpochka uh, and Alexei Ovchinin in the foreground as uh, they prepare to uh, close the hatch. Uh, there will be leak checks conducted on both sides of the docking uh, interface uh, between uh, the uh, hatchway uh, for the Soyuz and uh, the International Space Station uh, before that vestibule is depressurized down to vacuum, setting the stage for the actual undocking of the Soyuz from Rosviet that is scheduled three hours and 19 minutes from now. Undocking confirmed. We started this At 12.52 a.m. Central Time, 1.52 a.m. Eastern Time, yes, as uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station flew 254 miles over far eastern Mongolia. Give me your estimate. With undocking, Expedition 48 is now formally underway aboard the International Space Station under the command of NASA's Jeff Williams. What is your estimate of the docking port? No comments. Copy. It's all clean. And this is a view from the Soyuz as it backs away from the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. Again, undocking occurring on time at 12.52 a.m. Central, 1.52 a.m. Eastern Time. In a minute. Waiting for the first burn in three minutes. Copy. We're about a minute away from the first separation burn. Again, that will be an eight second burn to uh, increase uh, the opening rate between the Soyuz and the station by about six tenths of a meter per second. CMA 19M departing. Farewell, gentlemen. See you on the ground. The uh, traditional ringing of the bell on board uh, the International Space Station by its new commander. NASA's Jeff Williams. Good luck to you. See you on the ground. See you soon. Having launched uh, last December 15th, the Soyuz TMA-19M begins the journey home. Next stop, the steppe of Kazakhstan. Thruster activation. Yes, we call... First separation burn underway. 
Eight seconds. Oh, right. And the separation burn complete. Yes, we can observe the maneuver. There is the Soyuz TMA-19M. For those of us just joining our broadcast, uh, we are just uh, eight and a half minutes away from touchdown. A good view of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft uh, descending under its parachute. The Soyuz uh, nearing uh, its touchdown point southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. And we're standing by for touchdown. The Soyuz is home. Touchdown confirmed at uh, 4.15 a.m. Central Time. And now uh, video has been uh, reestablished uh, from the landing site. A good view of Yuri Malenchenko, uh, the uh, Soyuz commander. And uh, Tim Peake, uh, the first British astronaut to fly on the International Space Station. Peake uh, completing uh, his first mission. Malenchenko completing six flights into space and a total of 828 days away from the planet, second most on the all-time list behind uh, fellow cosmonaut Gennady Padalka. Raise the legs up. Okay, everyone's doing their job. Doc, if you want the fan connect. All three crew members now out of the Soyuz vehicle. It's going. Is that good? I think it's going to get already. Tim, do it. Is it blowing? It's, it's all good? It's all good. Yeah, I mean, it was just real picturesque. And there, there goes Copa right now. Uh, we were able to see it in the helicopters almost the entire way down under chute and like I said able to see those soft landing engines and everything fire and that was just unreal to see you know from a helicopter just a few hundred feet away. Well Dan uh, thanks very much uh, enjoy that weather it's not uh, often uh, that we uh, experience uh, temperatures around 80 degrees Fahrenheit but uh, Everything appeared to go by the book, and uh, we'll uh, await uh, further reports from you when you get back uh, with the crew in Karaganda.